All right, there's a hypothetical a rumor going out there that the Boston Celtics could offer the Detroit Pistons the 14th to 26th and 30th pick, which is the last pick in the draft being 30 in the first round, excuse me, for the number seven pick. Should the Pistons do it or not, hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. Smart to see sports talks. It, it's your boy CJ Goodfellow. Sorry. But uh, personally, I would do it. All right, I'm not going to hold you up. And oh, shoulda, woulda. This draft is really, really deep. Point guard, wings. The more and more I look into this draft before I get going on the draft spotlights, the more and more I think you can move back and still get a great player in this draft. Get multiple great players. The point guard out of France, I'm loving this game. Um, it's, some, it's some mock draft that got Cole Anthony sliding down the lottery. RJ Hampton can slide down the lottery. He was a five-star recruit out of high school, went to Australia with LaMelo Ball. I mean, there, there's endless possibilities. Sadiq or Coro. Um, Tyrese, Tyrese Maxey, if you like him, it's a lot of guys that can be there at 14, 26, and at 30. I mean, not sure who you can get at 30, but hey, you might can get Cassius Winston there. Winston, uh, you can't put the shortcomings of Mateen Cleaves on Winston, but Winston could be a good, you know, backup point guard like Tyus, uh, Tyus uh, Jones uh, from Memphis or like some of those guys could. So that's something that you can truly think about, man. I would, I would probably do it to get three picks. And you know Troy Vincent, excuse me, Troy Reaver is really, really good at drafting. So I would do it. You know, I can move back and I can get what just outside a late lottery of 14, and I still can end up maybe with an RJ Hampton or or the point guard from France. So I can still end up with a Cole Anthony or Coro Sadiq. It's a lot of guys in this draft. This draft is is really good at depth. You know what I'm saying? And you can move back to 14, and let's say you want to move back to with six with the Atlanta Hawks. You can say, I got 14 and I give you Luke Kennard to move up to six or, you know, or whoever else you want. You can move back up to six and still acquire two additional first round draft picks. So with that capital, if the Celtics go to seven and they see somebody they like it, I know who they looking at. The Celtics probably looking at James Wiseman. If Wiseman slide to seven, that's somebody that they probably really, really interested in and playing their middle spot. You know, who else could the Celtics be looking at at seven? They got two dominant wing guys that's going to be dominant wings and Brown and Tatum, in my opinion. They got the guard and Kimball Walker. So really, you looking for a four and the, the kid from USC, or you looking for a five there? That's who they looking at. Or they could be looking at depth. Because remember, they got the uh, Romeo Langford from, from Boston last year, so from uh, Indiana last year, so they could be looking to replace uh, Marcus Smart with him. Eventually, so you in a situation where Boston looking for a big guy. You know, they, uh, Ennis Cantor not cutting it, Tice not cutting it, and then the other young guy they got, Williams, he already injured. He he just needs to physically get stronger and get more experience. So they probably looking to get Wiseman, or they probably looking to get the kid uh, Ukongo from USC. So I know exactly who they got that guy on because that's what they need. They need a five, or they could be moving up to seven and flipping seven for, you know, an already proven commodity in the NBA. You know, for the Pistons, you can change all you. You can do a lot with those three picks. I mean, you can take the 26th pick and, you know, you can flip it for a future first round draft pick. But it's, it's a tremendous amount of talent in this draft when you're talking about wings, guards. You know what I'm saying? It's not so much big fella oriented, but, I mean, they can walk away at 14 with, with a guy that's better than you could draft it at seven. You know what I'm saying? You look at how Boston building it with two two way guards. Wings, excuse me, with Brown and Tatum. You know, you got Diambo, that kid for Auburn, they comparing him to Kawhi Leonard. You can get the kid from Vanderbilt who can shoot at Sadiq. So you really put, you really could say, let's do the wing thing. And at 26, you know, let's say we want to get the point guard out of France and get Diambo homeboy to run our point, be our point guard. We can't get him at 26. Somebody might take him at 20. Let's move up and let's trade Luke and move up a couple spots and get him. They got so much flexibility with those three picks and the 30th pick. You can get an international guy that you're looking to develop. Down there's always those guys you're looking to develop. Guys that thought they was going, that came out early, thought they was going to go in the first round. Look at, you know, Kevin Porter Jr. last year. You know, they had a great guy fall into their lap. They could have took him. They didn't take him. So, you know, that's something you could think about as far as that. It's a lot of pros today. It gives you a lot of flexibility. I mean, you could walk away. With with uh with one guy that can play right away, you can walk away with three developmental guys. But you in the developmental stages of a team, you can walk away with a wing, you can walk away with a guard, and you can walk away with a developmental whatever big guy, swing uh, stretch four. 
you know, developmental wing point guard, you know, you, you can walk away with a lot. You can take two point guards, you know what I'm saying? You can do a Schroeder, you know, uh, 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 Shea Gillis Lee, Chris Paul type of thing with Derrick Rose. You take two young guards. So the possibilities are endless. Now, are there cons to this? I think of one con, you know, had the Pistons stayed at seven and took, uh, uh, let's say, OB Toppins. And OB Toppins turned into to be a superstar or all-star. And we go to 14 and we take a guy that don't pan out. Now it's looking bad. We knew we should have stayed here and took Obi Toppins up. Boop, 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 boop. So moving that, moving back, you could be moving out of a really, really good spot to draft a superstar. But then again, you could stay at seven and not draft him. And still, he slide to eight and Obi Toppins going to be a star in New York. So that's kind of what you're looking at. The con is you could really get a guy seven. But the pro, the pro is the pros are way to con for me. You got three three picks that you really could succeed at. Three picks. 14 to 7. Yeah, you can see a guy like if you say a seven, I, I like so many guys that I can move back at 14 and still end up with RJ Hampton. You know what I'm saying? I can still end up with, with this guy. That guy, I mean, it sounds good. Now, if this was a draft as far as they had depth, not just depth, but they had superstars at the top. You know, you look at the top players. You took it like Denny. You looking at uh, uh, um, uh, the kid Edwards. You looking at Lamelo. You looking at Wiseman, Okongo, Obi Toppins. Um, um, it could be some other guys in there. I know I'm forgetting, but um, you look at some of those guys in there, and you know. Could one of them slot to seven? Yeah, you know. You're looking at uh, Helen Burton. You're looking at Cole Anthony. So it's really about what you're hearing. You know, if you're hearing that I can get Helen Burton at 14 because people questioning his shot, then, hey, go hit it. You say I can get Cole Anthony at 14 because people not sold on him? Okay, cool. If you rate Helen Burton, Anthony, Killian Hayes, and you rank, rank the point guard from France, and I got to get his name correct. And you say, well, they all the same. If I can get this friends guy because he got injured and fell off a little bit at 26, and I can walk away with R.J. Hampton or Cora or Sadiq at, at 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 14, and I can walk away with a future backcourt. And I and also if you hit these picks the right way, you know, just two or three. If you hit all three right, 14, 26, and 30, do you know how much you curve the scale for the rebuild? That that rebuild puts you ahead now. Now you ahead of the time. Instead of you could have been ahead trading Andre Drummond and Blake Griffin two years ago at the trade deadline. You could have you could have cashed them out, got assets, and, and put this franchise way ahead. Now you have another opportunity to jump the franchise way ahead by doing it. But if you really like somebody at seven, you like, oh, I think OB is going to be, and this is totally just a, a, a hypothetical, I think OB is going to be like a superstar. We stay at seven, if you believe in OB so much, you stay at seven and you take them. But if you sit there and you say, I got I got five or six guys I really like, you know what I'm saying? And if I can get one of them at 14 and I can take 26 and move up and get another two out of five or six guys I really like, or one of them can fall to 26, I'm happy with that. You know, then does it kind of move the roster around? Yeah, then you're looking at Kyrie Thomas and, you know, guys like that that's hanging on like, well, we don't need your services. You know, like like we gonna roll with the guards that we drafted. You probably looking at Luke Kennard and probably gonna move him. We don't need your services. So you in a situation where this this whole thing could be recreated in one draft, and I think I like the possibility of trading back with Boston, unless it's somebody there that you know is gonna be the truth. You know, but it's so many guys that's projected to go behind seven that I like, man. Sadiq out of Vanderbilt or Coro. Um, the point guard out of France, R.J. Hampton. Some uh, mock drafts got Cole Anthony going into the 20s. It's a lot of guys that's probably going to go late in that lottery or late in 20s that's going to end up being a really, really good ball player. So, I mean, yeah, it hurt if what if LaMelo fell out of seven if we traded out that pick from Boston and we looking stupid, but I don't think that's going to happen. But it's nobody up top that I'm sold at. Now, a couple guys that, just in my opinion, that I would be – I would be mad that what I'll be mad if I traded out of seven that wasn't there. Now it's a scenario before I get to that where you can go like, you know what, Boston, we got a deal, but I want to see who fall at seven first. 
All right. All right. All right. We got a handshake agreement, but I kind of want to see what will fall at seven. Now, Boston might be like, well, I got a deal in Atlanta. I mean, Atlanta, could, but if they got a deal with Atlanta, you know, let them do the deal with Atlanta, you know. But if you got somebody at seven you like a lot, you know, and you and you can tell Boston, hang on and get to seven and somebody snatch them at six. You be like, OK, let's do the deal then. If you can hang on that long, but you really you can kind of project what's going to happen in the draft. But this draft is just it's an enigma. It's hard to project. But a couple guys that's there at seven that I think that you have to take, you know, obviously if LaMelo there, people are going to want to take him, which we don't think he's going to be there. In, in, in my analysis, and my, my analysis is going to change the more I break these drafts down. But guys, I think right now, today, that I think is going, that's going to be world change, that's going to be world beaters, or the guys I really rate there, if Denny there, if Wiseman there, LaMelo there, I take them. Those are three. If those three there, and I could be forgetting somebody. I'm not high on Edwards like that. If those three there, I take them. I mean, even Edwards there. I thought Edwards in there. The 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 potential too great to pass them up. Don't four there. I take them. You know. So if I can, if I can, my number one guy for the Pistons to be honest, at that range, realistically, we know Lamelo won't be there. Edwards won't be there unless they mess up on some way, uh, somewhere around the line. Realistically, the guy, the two guys I'm starting to like, I'm doing more homework on Denny, but the guy I like the most is Wiseman. You know, I know we need a point guard and all that. I get it. You know, but I think sticking Wiseman in there, remember, he was the number one recruit in the land. You know what I'm saying? And you might can trade back up. And you might can get uh, 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 RJ Hampton, too, if you trade back. I like him, too. But Wiseman is probably the guy the most I like there. You know, you stick him in the middle. I think potentially he got better potential than Andre Drummond. I think he'd be a better rim defender potentially, and he, I think he'd develop offensive of game. I'd love to see Wood and Wiseman next to each other. Diambo, that front line, you know, I like it, man. But hey, let me know what you guys think about the hypothetical that's going around. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you have a business question, cry response, or video quest. Keep sharing the videos. Twitter's the fast way to reach me. You want to make a donation? Cash app CJ Good three one three. That's in the description. PayPal link there as well too. Best way to donate is to share, share the video. One time for the one time. It's your boy CJ Goodfellow, Goodfellow Sports TV. We gone.